So, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on the Abundant Culture Podcast. And we're really excited because a lot of people don't know what being a business broker is or, you know, how to get started or anything. Like, we didn't know about that world at all until we met you. So, um, before we dive really deep into, um, you know, what being a business broker is, can you? Tell us, you know, how you got started into business, you know, give us a little backstory. Yes, absolutely. Be happy to tell you. And thank you guys for having me on today. And it's been a pleasure working together so far as we go through some of the process. And so myself getting into this business brokering role that I'm in right now, as well as doing franchise consulting, it really came through a partnership I have with my business partners, Michael and Mimi. And together, we manage two businesses really at hand. One is the business brokering side, and the other is the CPA firm side. And so together, these two businesses, as we knew, they would have a lot of synergies together because having a strong accounting background really is a lot of the foundation in business. Yeah. And before that, you know, also knowing how to manage people. And I think without experience of, you know, managing people, it can be difficult to know, you know, what it's going to be like as you open up, a, say, a new quick service restaurant, right? And, you know, I've done that before. And so I also trained franchisees in the past, as well as numerous sales representatives and as I was getting promoted quickly throughout the corporate world, I realized that just managing a business and, you know, that business could be doing a gross of say 5 million and your salary is only going to be so much, you know, especially on the, you know, it's like, so I saw that becoming a business owner was something that, you know, I wanted to do and I, I didn't quite, you know, know what business was right for me. I had always been looking at so many. I, I had always thought, you know, what what type of business would I want to go into? And, you know, you, I started to realize that really what I wanted to do is help more people get started in business because I love the building process, that planning and idea phase. And so figuring out, you know, what is this business? What could it be like? And I love building them. And then once it got going really good, I kind of like to go and find my next project. And, you know, that was always how I did it in corporate. I would go to a store that typically wasn't performing very well. And, you know, that store needed some help with building out a culture of, you know, what that, you know, experience should be like for the customers. And, you know, and so then I, I, I wanted to bring that to my business and make sure that everybody who comes into the process experiences things in a certain way and gets treated a certain way. Because I know that it's a fast paced environment where there's not always a lot of clear information, you know, right off the bat that you can go off of. And so you really have to do your homework and know what you're looking at in order to, to understand better what you're decision you're going to make is going to be. And so, you know, I always knew that I was helping people make good decisions, you know, even when they were choosing the right home services or, you know, whether it's right, getting into the right business for them. It's, it's about what's finding out their, their needs and what's right for them. And then, you know, being able to present to them certain things that, you know, could solve that need. And, and so, you know, that's kind of how I got started and my business partners, as they were managing the firm, they acquired a couple of accounting practices. And after that, they just knew that, you know, they wanted to help more people and grow their practice by helping younger entrepreneurs and when they're just getting started to, you know, be able to handle some of what comes right after you purchase as well. And so we knew that it was kind of the confidence to be able to not only make the purchase but then you know that you're going to be able to continue successfully so um that's that's a little bit about the background where i got started in this awesome so like kind of talk about what led you from i guess being in corporate america to being a business broker because honestly before i 
met you before I started thinking about like just getting into different types of businesses I didn't even know that there was a such thing as a business broker and I'm pretty sure like 90% of people out there probably don't know because like whenever you heard about you know what somebody wanted to be when they got older I never heard business broker but the more I find out about the profession uh, the more cool that it, it seems it seems like an awesome profession so like what led you from what you were doing to like uh, working, brokering the purchase and the sale of businesses? Because I think that yeah. is so. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I think that you're right. It's that you know most people out there don't know a good business broker if you ask them, and and that is true that you know most of the time they are a little bit more difficult to find because you'll have sort of business broker that are typically also going to be doing commercial real estate i i would say you know most of the time you're going to find that uh commercial real estate and and in in most states out there they do require some sort of real estate license to be a part of your firm mm -hmm. and so like in our firm we have one of our staff members who holds the real estate license for us you know and and in other firms you know you can you can do business brokering and and things like that but a lot of times they're looking for the property right and and they value it because there's property now that the business can be sold but a lot of times we notice that you know you'll find people out there in restaurants because there's equipment and and so you know and but other times service based businesses really were were not not finding you know a lot of business brokers that want to take on a a landscaping business right and you know for us we saw this from the accounting firm perspective in a little different way because these aging baby boomers continue to need people to you know find good owners as as we're looking at an acquisition right now where the owner you know needs to find somebody as as she's getting to that age and that point where she can't continue on and you know somebody else but a lot of times not having a family member or person in mind and you know, so we decided that we would go out there and help out not only, you know, the, the big businesses that, you know, I think a lot of brokers that maybe just focus on the business side, but then they're, they're only wanting to deal with two to five million or so in, in revenue. And, and that makes sense because then you have a, even a, you know, a significant amount and a great seller's discretionary earnings that you can take a large multiple of. But you know, what about, you know, some of the smaller business owners out there? And so you find that a lot of times the business brokers, um, you know, they're struggling to find sellers. And so they're, they're trying to keep these listings to themselves and, and not always, you know, necessarily going out and finding all the avenues, but looking for buyers. And so we knew that we wanted to go out and, and just be a resource for not only the sellers, but then for the buyers to be able to figure out what businesses could be right out there for them. And so we saw an opportunity to do things a little bit different, you know, than what was available with the current commercial realtors doing business brokering and the current business brokers out there, there was some few and far between doing a, a good job of it. And, you know, if you could get a hold of them only, you know, it's like, I know that one of the biggest problems sometimes is there's listings and then nobody responds when you put in your inquiries. And so yeah. it can be hard. And, and so we, uh, we've decided that, you know, together as a, you know, my business partners and I wanted to not only find the right businesses, but form long-term relationships with our clients that being that, you know, we're not transactional. It's, it's, we're patient, you know, we're willing to wait the long term and I don't need a quick sale. And so the other business brokers out there, I think a lot of times, you know, it's, it's about getting that next commission check. And so it's uh, one of these things where we know that if we can provide a good education and be that resource for buyers out there, the sellers will continue to come and, you know, also, you know, provide resources for us to, you know, see what options are out there. Yeah. I have so many follow-up questions to that, mm -hmm. but 
I'll ask them in the right order so that, you know, it flows well. Um, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, I appreciate like that you guys took that kind of avenue in business brokering because like when I first started looking at it, that was like my problem. Like I, I just wanted to find like a good broker and I reached out to several before you and most of them did not reply. And then the ones that did reply, they sounded like they didn't. Mean. Yeah, they didn't. They just wanted to get me off the phone really quickly or they tried to sell me a business like right then and there, a specific one. And I didn't even like I was new. And you were the first guy who was patient. You actually educated me. Um, and you you work with me like every step of the way. And it was it was kind of refreshing because it's like, man, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people, in my opinion, that are great so far at business brokering. Like my first impressions were like really, really bad, but yours was like the good one. So it's like when you do find a good business broker, I feel like you kind of hit the jackpot. But um Well, when that happened though, um he kept telling me because he was doing all the calls. He kept telling me like, yeah, you know, they either don't answer or they're rude. So when you came along, you're like really nice and you know, like you knew what you were talking about. So I'm like man, it has to be something to him because if yeah. all of them are like this, then maybe he's not real. Maybe he's, maybe he's like pretending to, I don't know, maybe it's a scam or something because, you know, he just, he's not like the other business brokers. Yeah. Um, and then it's funny because when we met you in person at the networking event, that same night that we talked to you, it was like confirmation, like, okay, he's real and yeah. he's awesome. So yeah, we're definitely going to work with him. <laughs> oh, yes. So like, you know, what? It's about forming those relationships and, and getting out there. And that's part of the reason we've also tried to stay, you know, somewhat locally, you know, and we love the Chicago land market. I was born and raised in this market and you know, I, I plan to stay in this market for, you know, my lifetime. But, you know, it's, it's, when you get out there, you start forming these great relationships and, you know, it's a lot of times you're not going to see other, other business brokers out there because they're not doing the networking that they should be and, and, and making the time to go out there and, and find people. And, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, it's, it's, it's a new uh, time for disruption and, and seeing what else as more businesses come to the market. I agree. So, like, can you give us a little bit of insight on, like, what does it look like? Like, what's the training? Like, what's, what's involved in actually becoming a business broker? Because, um, like, I come from the real estate side, mainly, and it, it's, I don't know if it's similar or even the same, but in, in real estate, it's like, you know, you have all of these different trainings, all these different types of licensings that you can get. And each license maybe takes a couple weeks to get or something like that. And it's like, sometimes you can be licensed at something I've noticed, but still not know a lot about it. So is it the same for business brokers? And if so, like what does, how long does it take to become one? You know, I, I can say that there is some things you learn as you go, right? That you don't always learn from the book side. Um, there's a lot of resources and training out there, courses to become certified. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where as you get experienced in how these transactions occur and what the seller is going through during this time and what are the buyers really looking for in terms of the information they need. Some of these things that you can maybe pick up from reading the text and getting a license and, you know, becoming certified. Um, but also, you know, so, in the state of Illinois, there's a special business brokerage license that you would get for your company. And, you know, then of course, if you want to have a real estate license, you could as well. And in some states, this might be combined into, you know, having a real estate license and a business brokerage license in one. And so, you know, for myself, I started off not only doing the business brokerage side, but franchise consulting 
as an avenue of, you know, if a buyer is looking at a business acquisition, they may also want to consider franchising, you know, yeah. and franchising being another way of getting started, having a plan and some history that you can go off of. Because we know that the failure rates on starting a business from scratch are very high. And yeah. a lot of times in the market, you know, there's only so many needs you can fill. And then, you know, there's probably likely a competitor out there doing the same thing already. And so you can either try to beat them or join them. And so a lot of times you can either or, or buy them out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, so if you can do one of those things, you know, We've seen that um, you learn a lot from the franchise consulting side, looking at those business models, because you're looking at the numbers, you're comparing it to what other locations are performing at. And, you know, same thing in business brokering. We're looking at the historical performance and seeing what it is like. And so having a strong accounting background is always a, a positive in this case. And that's, one of the things that I don't think the real estate side, sometimes it hits on you know, some of the accounting pieces, but breaking down income and expenses and knowing what that operating expenses and what that seller is really taking out of the business and yeah. being able to identify these things is, is important. And so, you know, a big part of my training came from joining my partners at the firm, working out of an office where CPAs and accounting is occurring all the time and knowing that, you know, I'm seeing how they deal with the different filings and, you know, all the things that a small business owner goes into after they buy that business or franchise and what are they going to need to go through in terms of keeping up with the bookkeeping and keeping up with, uh, you know, different, you know, quarterly and annual filings that they're going to need to do. And, you know, so I don't know if there's one place that you could go out and get all of that training in, in one session or one package, you know, but rather, you know, having experience continuing to get involved in more transactions and sales and you know, at the beginning, of course, uh, you know, getting uh, the basic license, like you say, it might get you what you need in terms of being legal, but also, you know, building it around, um, you know, I would say also just finding mentors in the in that industry, right, and, and following what have they done to be successful and seeing where you can go with it. Yeah, for sure. And how long does that licensing usually take uh, to get from like start, like not knowing anything to finish, at least having the license and being legal to go out there and start doing transactions? You know, I'd say if you wanted to get started on it, it would take anywhere from six months to a year, really. And that depends if you're going to also go out and do the real estate license, which I would highly recommend if not yourself, a member of your team hold that license. Mm -hmm. I don't hold one myself specifically, but as I tell you, my member of my team does. So it's like, because these are going to be heavily related to, you know, that business owner may own that property as well. You might want to have those types of resources, mm -hmm. but if you want to, you know, get started and see, you know, what types of businesses without real estate, you could just get the business brokerage side. And in that case, you know, really you're going out registering with the applicable state licenses. And so from there, you can get involved with certain organizations that do training programs like the IBBA and, um, you know, getting involved in those can get you some of the, the initial material and, once you get involved with your first transactions is I think going to be the biggest teacher for you, you know, and, and knowing that, you know, you, you've got all that, but still walking them from start to finish. I know the statistics of businesses that get listed. I heard it was as high as 90% of them never sell. So it's like, so only 10% of businesses that ever get listed actually get sold. So that's like a really low rate of, you know, success at actually selling. But that's because a lot of times they're not priced correctly. You know, there's, you know, somebody can't form the right relationship. And 
if an owner is trying to sell a business directly, that can be quite uncomfortable for the buyer to negotiate you know, with the seller directly. And so it's sometimes it's one of those things where you find uh, you know, that it's not as black and white as real estate. A lot of times you list your house, you know, there's a lot of common paperwork that you use and it's very standardized where these deals might include seller financing, might include, you know, bank financing, it might include a portion of, you know, the down payment or raising capital even. So you never know what you're going to get. For sure, definitely. So in the business brokerage world, um, would you say that is competitive? Like, is it as competitive as like just being like a real estate broker or agent? Or, um, you know, is it not as much competition? I would say there's there's a lot of competition. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where the ones that want to do the business brokering side, they'll generally find themselves into one, you know, falling into one industry, you know, whether that be, you know, they, they sell restaurants or they sell dental practices or they sell, you know, and for us, it's been, you know, we're somewhat agnostic in the sense that I'm, you know, working with all types of businesses on the franchising side and there's a lot of different industries out there. Mm -hmm. And so we find ourselves, um, you know, a little bit, you know, not necessarily going towards one type of business or another, but rather, you know, being able to service the small business owners and, and knowing that, you know, they need help uh, putting these things together because just trying to go out there and sell your business yourself can be quite difficult. Um, so, you know, a lot of competition and, and a lot of times there's not a, as much collaboration between brokers out there. They don't seem to want to work together. Um, you know, so that's where the competition is high because let's say you have a buyer that wants to get, you know, the listing that somebody else has. You can't just go to them and say, hey, you know, i am got the right buyer for you guys. Let's bring them to the table. And so it's one of these things where you got to work each deal and there's a lot of follow-up that that's involved and and you're not going to get on one phone call and and just close a deal i i don't believe that that's really the case in any of these transactions and yeah. so there's a lot of things that are confidential even that you're not going to find out until after you get to a certain point and and then you can make the right decision and so and all the way up until that point, the deal can always fall apart, you know, at the last minute. It's like, so I think that competition is high. It's for somebody that has that sort of persistence to be able to continue following up, even when chances could be lower than you'd like them to be, that it's going to come to a close. You know, so where I think a lot of times people see real estate as, you know, everybody knows what you're getting involved in and everybody needs a place to either live or do business in. And so it's like, but at the same time, these businesses, there's a lot of how are you going to do things the same or different than what the current owner is doing in, in now acquiring that business that you have to consider. And so some of these other things that are, you know, not as, you know, clear as, as you can find in, in different types of transactions. Yeah. And then um, another question I have for you is if someone wanted to become a business broker, you know, after they listen to this podcast, is like training something that you offer? Um, you know, not currently as we're still in that, you know, we've been growing now for over four years. Um, I would definitely be open to having a conversation with anybody interested in hearing more about business brokering and see if I could steer them down the right path. Okay. And of course, as we grow our business, we're always going to be continuing to take those next steps. And so, you know, one day we might be able to have that as an option. Awesome. awesome. That's really cool. So what are some uh, principles that you've learned as a broker, or even just an entrepreneur in general, general, that have helped to make you, I guess, successful at what you've been doing? Like, what are some principles that you kind of apply, you know, every single day to your business that help you 
uh, get more clients, sell more businesses and things of that nature? Yeah, you know, I think that some of my guiding principles have always been staying, staying focused really and becoming that subject matter expert at, at what I'm doing. And when you have that expertise and you know what you're doing, you can walk people through and show them certain resources and, and provide that real education. And we know that uh, this is not a, a sales process, right? It's, it's a guiding somebody into an investment that they're going to be really building their future around and knowing that this is the case. And, and so I'd say that I try to start off with, you know, my most important things each day, knowing that if I can accomplish those first and feel that, you know, I've, I've been able to help more people get into business, it's, it's one step further each day because as more people get into business, I know that, you know, they have friends and family and other people that also want to get into business. And so I try to stay positive that it's a building cycle and these things don't happen overnight. It's, you don't wake up with a million dollar business tomorrow. It just doesn't happen like that. It's like, you got to start off with the first dollar of revenue. And from there, you got to make sure that every day you're progressing. And so I know that uh, a lot of times the building phase is the hardest and the longest, and it can seem like, you know, it's like if I could just get it built, they'll come. But, you know, a lot of times making sure that you're planning all along the way and, and not rushing things mm -hmm. to know that it, it's going to be the, the right decision you're making is, it's kind of like um, that patience. And if you don't have it, it it's going to be really difficult because it, in this world, it doesn't come quickly. It's, it's more about, you know, putting in that time. And uh, then with time, you, you get to have, uh, you know, more freedom eventually and, and knowing that you've already uh, gained all that knowledge that you needed. Definitely. Another question I had was, uh, what are some, I guess, qualities, some good qualities that a good business broker should have? Because as you stated, <laughs> there's probably a lot of terrible bad ones out there. And some of them don't reply. So that's already a bad quality. <laughs> yeah, but um, yes. know that in every industry, there's qualities that you should have. Like if you're going to be in... Uh, like what we do, raising capital, you need to be very, very trustworthy and you need to kind of be a people person. What are some good qualities in your industry that you like to see from business brokers, either that are on your team or ones that you're working with or even within yourself? Yeah, yeah, I think that the good, the good qualities you should look for in finding the right business brokers, you know, and the ones that I try to, you know, bring to the forefront is really being um, open to talking to people, you gotta be somewhat of a, a people person and you gotta be a relationship builder because you're getting on the phone with somebody and a lot of times you haven't spoken with them before and you're starting to put together what their plan is as well as you know knowing what you have to offer and trying to fit those two pieces together and it can be you know somewhat difficult and knowing that you know the seller is trying to sell this for usually as much as they can and the buyer is trying to get the best deal they can as, you know as well and so it's about being able to come to those mutual understandings. And so if you are not able to kind of talk and reason and, and be able to have those types of difficult conversations with, you know, both parties as it comes through, you know, to get this deal to closing, it's a lot different than just getting somebody on the phone. It's, you know, yeah. and, having them feel confident in making that wire transfer over that, you know, that you're going to make a down payment or 
you know, that you're going to eventually be, you know, signing an agreement and you're going to be closing on, uh, you know, an offer here. And so it's, it's getting comfortable with bringing people through this level of transaction, knowing that it's probably one of the biggest purchases that they're going to make. I mean, aside from, you know, it could be as large as buying their house or bigger than, you know, that as well. It's like, so knowing that these people as well on the selling side, this is likely something they've built for some time and, and also difficult for them to see, you know, what is it going to look like as they, they give it away or not, you know, sell it, to, sell it away. Yeah. You know, so I, I, uh, I think that, you know, if you can keep your composure and got to stay calm because if you're getting too excited, you'll find that both the sellers and buyers can get worked up and you have to, you know, make sure that everybody knows that it's, it's gotta be a mutually beneficial relationship. It, it can't be one-sided. And so you gotta be looking to form those win-wins out there. For sure. Definitely. I agree. So um, what are some common misconceptions people have about like the business brokerage world? Um, you know, I think some common misconceptions is, you know, that, you know, maybe you could sell your business yourself and, and, and that's gonna, you know, not be, you know, something like too difficult for you, but it's, it's, it gets to be, you know, one of those things where I, I know that a seller can be, you know, as I was just describing, somewhat more defensive as, you know, a, a call might come in. And, you know, so it's, it's one of these things where I think commonly, um, you know, people don't know how businesses are bought and sold. So if they don't know um, business brokers are out there, they're going to try to list the business themselves, thinking that they're going to save on any commission that they might have to pay. But in reality, I would say a business broker is likely going to, you know, at an average of 10% in the business brokering world for the commission side, it's like most of the time they're going to increase the sale price by at least that. If, if not, you know, just by saving you the overall time that it takes to get to the closing, you know, that could be another big factor because how long you know, can you wait? It just depends what the seller situation is, right? And so if a seller wants to sell a business and get the most money for it, but also they want it to be done, you know, as quickly as possible, it's usually those two are kind of like a weight and balance. You have to decide, you know, do you sell it, you know, at a higher multiple, but you're going to wait longer for your buyer or, you know, and put a, and then again, on the DIY side, do it yourself, you're not going to know where to price it maybe. And, and you're thinking, you know, am I too high or low? I think a lot of times they have a number in mind because they kind of know where they want to be at as they exit this business and maybe are planning on retiring or whatever their next steps are going to be. Um, you know, I think that, you know, it's just that, there are brokers out there that can help you put together good valuations and, and come up with the numbers. And by spending that extra time now, it'll actually decrease the overall sale transaction time for you. Yeah. yeah. And, and then like, not only that, but um, this is kind of something we were talking about last night at the workshop that we did at our church. Um, the longer, like, the seller will wait for the business that is like you know how people say like time is money so if you're thinking about like inflation and all that then it's like you could be losing you know money because it's sitting on the business market for like a year or two or however long so it's like you know you want to sell this as fast as possible it might you might even make more money if you go with the business broker rather than just trying to do it yourself and waiting years to sell your business yeah and i, I will tell the audience my my own perspective i mm -hmm. totally agree with jonathan because like when i first started looking at buying a business i contacted plenty of businesses that i thought looked great 
And I thought I was going to get a phone call back maybe sometime this that week. And like we stated before, most people do not reply back. And the ones that did reply back barely gave me any information at all to make any type of decision on. And meeting Jonathan um, made that process so much more streamlined and so much more smoothly. So I do believe in like definitely having the right professionals in your corner, whether you're doing real estate or whether you're buying businesses, like they're worth their weight in gold. And honestly, like, for the right business broker, they're going to be worth 10 times more than whatever their commission is. Now for the wrong one, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you there, but for the right one, it, it just relieves so much stress. Like there's so many things that I don't have to really handle as much because I use Jonathan as my business broker. So anybody watching this, who's looking to get into business, this is a great one. He's the only great one that I know so <laughs> if you want to go find another one good luck but here's one right here he's and it's a excellent. plus because uh he also has an accounting firm so excellent. that Absolutely. you know like that alone it like helps us with the financing portion of it for sure um so I did want to ask a bonus question before we wrapped it up um and I didn't put this down in the email so this is just kind of random for you but um what is the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you um in business or if not in business just in life in general <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one um <laughs> you know I'm trying to think of the most embarrassing thing that's happened um you know, it's it's just one of those things where you're you're always trying to present yourself and and be prepared. And um, you know, I was I was standing up at this uh, event and and just kind of going through the the what he was asking about. And and you know, at the end, I just I I tried to have a conversation with the speaker, and you know, just didn't seem to quite work out afterwards on the phone like I, I had I described. And I just, um, you know, you learn from everything you do, right? And, and it's important that you don't stop after one, you know, embarrassment, right? And, you know, maybe I felt that at the time, you know, he was somebody that, um, you know, I, I should have, you know, had, a, you know, more conversation with, or I could have done things differently. But, you, you continue to find that there's always more people out there and, and you just keep on going even after, you know, a little bit of embarrassment. Yeah, definitely. And to all our audience, like you're at some point in time being in any type of entrepreneur mm -hmm. in any type of business in any industry, you're going to have moments where you don't exactly know what to say, how to say it, or who to be at that moment. And you're going to screw it up. And I tell people all the time, just know, just be okay with the fact that you're going to screw it up and that you'll have plenty more opportunities to get it right. And I know I've definitely had tons tons of embarrassing moments in business so it's okay like every entrepreneur has them like they just have them. yes keep on getting out there for sure yeah so one of the last questions we have uh second to last questions is really important uh this is abundant culture you're on the abundant culture podcast and we believe in spreading abundance through many different avenues and this podcast is actually one of the ways we do it and we want to ask all of our um, guests including yourself how do you spread abundance because everybody has their own way of doing it and we know that your way is probably unique to you so how what is one of the ways that you spread abundance in your life you know I think that one of the biggest ways I spread abundance in my life is you know if you ever go out and you know you look around and you just notice that somebody's over there smiling and i always tend to keep a smile on my face and i find that it brings others around me you know joy to see you know that you know somebody is happy and you know enjoying life and you know when you're over there and it's almost contagious for them right and and so i find that even when others might not have the best attitude out there, I try to always stay positive. And by smiling and keeping that positive attitude, 
I can, you know, spread more abundance and joy out there in the world. Yeah, and that's really important, especially yeah. when you live in Chicago, <laughs> where most yeah. people do not smile. <laughs> no, not often. Spread it to him when, um, you know, the other broker that we're working with right now um, hasn't been doing that great of a job. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely help a lot. Yeah. Um, so just wrapping it up, uh, thank you for providing all the value that you just provided on the podcast. You probably cleared up so many things for so many different types of people. There's probably people who want to become business brokers now. There's probably people who might want to buy a business from you or may want to sell their business. And in order to do that, they have to get in contact with you. So our last question for the day is how do people get in contact with you? Is it social media, email, text message? What, what You're works? all. Yes. yes. What yes. Works? That's for you. Please find me on LinkedIn. I'm always on there. Jonathan Pace. You can look at my profile. You can also catch me on my social handles at Johnny on Pace. J-O-N-N-Y-O-N-P-A-C-E. And, you know, if you ever want to reach out to me via the website, onpacefranchising.com, and you can always find our latest news, updates, blogs, more resources for you that I'm coming out with and things that you should definitely take a look at. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Abundant Culture Podcast. Thanks, guys.